triple seven with 280 plus passengers. And it just that we call home and we don't know what happened to it. And that, that's a bit troubling. Um, and, and it made us think that we're not doing good enough to monitor our planet. And as we dig deeper and deeper, we found that there are significant gaps in how we're monitoring our planet from space. And it's a simple gap. Um, it's something that people don't think about if you're not in the remote sensing world. But uh, the reality is um, half of Earth is um, on average cloudy, about 50 percent, some places more than others. Um, and half of Earth is nighttime. And when you combine these two, 75 percent of Earth at any given time, it's going to be either cloudy or nighttime or a combination of the two. And majority of the satellites that are trying to image our planet, uh, they're using optical imaging satellites um, and they can't see through clouds and they can't see at nighttime. So um, the reliability of collection is very low. Sometimes you can look because the, the clouds are not there and the sun is in the perfect location. But if that's not happening there, you're not going to be able to monitor. Um, on top of the darkness, darkness and the clouds, uh, there are other problems with remote sensing as well. The resolutions are sometimes very low um, and you can't really uh, identify and classify some of the items that you're looking for. Uh, majority of the satellites are going to the same uh, planes. And so you have a very fixed imaging time. M most of the satellites are going over these areas around 1030 in the morning, or maybe they're in a dawn dusk orbit, which means you're going to look at them at the uh, at noon, uh, but majority of them are between 10.30 and 2. Uh, but business don't stop after 2 p.m. or before 10.30, right? You might have some sort of a big problem that you're going to be facing um, at midnight or at 3 in the morning. What are you going to do? There's not going to be any satellites. Um, so the passes are very predictable. Um, all the satellites, everyone knows where they are, and you can predict when the satellite is going to come over uh, your area of interest. And so you can, uh, if you're the adversary, you can kind of manage to do things um, around the clock, around those passes to make sure you can hide uh, from the satellites. Uh, the revisits are not frequent. Maybe you can look at these areas once a day if you're lucky and the clouds are not in, in, on the way, but um, it's not such that you can monitor the place throughout the day and understand how things are changing throughout the day. And therefore the reactions are really slow. Um, if you're trying to get an imagery from one of the providers today, it might take you eight hours, 12 hours, if not the full day. And so let's say you were going to look for a ship. And uh, by the time you request that imagery and by the time you receive that imagery, the ship is gone. And so it doesn't really matter anymore. So it's, it's not a very reactive system at the moment. And it's very unreliable. Uh, sometimes you don't, you don't get the order. Sometimes they bump you. And so the entire system is broken. Um, and it's not working flawlessly how in other industries such as software, you can always rely on, on the fact that the service is going to be there. And so what Capella is doing is we're building a constellation of 36 satellites. Uh, we launched our first satellite last year called Denali. It was an internal prototype satellite. We're launching our first operational um, satellite in the next few months called Sequoia. Uh, we're putting six more up um, in 2020. And as we get closer to 2022, we're going to be building towards that constellation. And that gets you hourly monitoring of anywhere in the world. Our resolution is um, really good. These are very high resolution satellites. They're half a meter, which means the pixel sizes are half a meter. Anything, anything larger than half a meter, we can see and detect. They're going to a low Earth orbit um, in 12 planes, three satellites in each plane. Um, and that's going to get us the global global coverage. Um, I want to quickly show you a, a video of how easy it's going to be for you to place an order. This is our web application. Uh, you just and you're going to be able to, it's kind of like Google Maps. You, you can kind of point to the area of interest. This is Rotterdam in Netherlands. Um, you can either search the archive there or if the archive does not exist or there's no um, imagery of that location, you can request one. So you can just very easy, say, I want to look at um, Port of Rotterdam. I want to look at it between this date um, to another date. You can you can select the resolution um, and then the order will get received. You don't have to pick a phone call. You don't have to fax. You don't have to email. It's all automated. Uh, we receive the order. We 
instantly transmit that to the satellites because we're, we're working with the communication satellites that are going to be able to look at our satellites all the time. Um, and you're going to be able to monitor the order when it goes from pending to accepted to confirmed uh, to complete it. And you're going to be able to use the same platform um, to look at the imagery, download the imagery and interact with it. Um, so very easy, easy way of using the imagery. Um, I want to show you some sample imagery. Sorry, I don't think they're going to look that great on the on the screens here. Um, but this is some sample imagery that we've collected over um, San Francisco, where our headquarters is. Uh, you can see a ship on the right side, and we've zoomed in uh, on the left side. Um, if you could see this on my my monitor, it would be a really crisp, beautiful, smooth, essentially a black and white picture. And if you've seen SAR imagery before, they're not really beautiful. Um, and so what we're doing with our satellites are we're able to multi-look over one area for a very long amount of time and average and essentially eliminate the noise in the background. So it really looks like a black and white optical picture. The difference is we can see through clouds, we can see at nighttime, and it's a very reliable uh, way of collecting and monitoring areas. Um, this is the same frame, but another region of that frame where you can see some oil tanks. Um, um, this is the Travis Air Force. You can see some um, planes on the right side. What's really interesting about this picture, and I don't think you can see, you certainly can't see this. We can actually see the cracks between the, the concrete. So the cracks are maybe about a centimeter, uh, but because radar is an active uh, measurement tool and it's sending signals, that crack is actually very visible in the picture. So you can see things that you certainly can't see in optical imagery. Um, and I want to show you another very exciting thing that we're going to be rolling out, which is change detection. So let's say you want to look at an area and you just want to be notified when something changes. Um, and so the, the picture on the right is the optical um, sort of look at the same area over two different time zones. And then the picture on the left is we've done the change detection using SAR and, um, and we've put it on the same base map. And what we can do is we can send you notifications. We can uh, send you an email, we can send you an alarm over text, and, um, and you can just tell us, I'm interested in this area, monitor it once a day or maybe once every hour. And if something changes, just let me know. So I don't have to keep monitoring this area visually with, with, uh, with my eyes. Um, anyway, we're here with our partners, RSI. So if you have more questions for us, please stop by. And uh, we're very excited to be uh, working with them and opening the market in India. Thank you very much. And now I would like to welcome a very special guest, Sarvanan, a fisherman who is a local legend. He uses map division to help fishing communities across the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu. Sarvanan creates maps documenting how fishermen use land by means of participatory mapping techniques, government records, and historical data. As a coordinator with the advocacy group, uh, Coastal Resource Center, Sarvanan has mapped around 35 villages across four districts of Tamil Nadu. He aims to eventually cover all of the state's 600 odd villages lining the Bay of Bengal and Indian Ocean. He combines technology inf and information from Google Maps, government records, and historical data. Sarvanan ji, I welcome you. In order to Sarvanan, Urur Kupam, Mino Gramata Sandama, Kotiwa Gorigo, Ur Pagna Mino Gramata, Craspani, Ur Elevated Expressway and the project for the Nanga, and the project led feasibility report to Lena Sulina Patina, Mino Gramata Nangavandi, Edime, Sayele, Ana, and the Mino Gramata, Pakat Lerke, Edikime Pine Bada and Nilanga Lavandi, Nangada, Payakro, Abri Solamudu, Ur Peri or Adriche Vandi, Engel Kurdu, Karano. I realized that it was not the truth only when the elevated expressway project starting from Nochikupam, a part of Marina Beach to Kotivakam, a six lane roadway project covering 14 fishermen villages was starting to appear. The project had covered 14, village, uh, 14, 14 fishing villages across and claim, it, claim the area to be unused land area or wasteland area. Hello? This information was obtained after applying for Right to Information Act from National Highways. As a fisherman, we were shocked 
to hear that the land area we have been using all along the years for our basic livelihood has been classified into wasteland or unused land adha eppadi adha payanga eppadi adha vandu podivu padatha mudiyum ana adukku document kedaiyadu ana naanga kaalam kaalama thalamura thalamuriya thaatha muppatta kaalathil irundhu na payanpadithu irukkom ana adukku endha documentume kedaiyadu appo eppadi adha documentation pandrathu appdi sollum bodhu enoda friend sida thaande solittu avaru vandu gs mapper avaru அப்போ அவர்கிட்ட சொல்லும் போது இதை ஆவணப்படுத்த முடியும் ஒரு வரைபடம் மூலியமா ஆவணப்படுத்த முடியும் கண்டிப்பாக நான் வந்து ஹெல்ப் பண்ணுறேன் அப்படின்னு சொல்லும் போது என்ன தான் ஜிஎஸ்டில் வந்து ஒரு பெரிய டெக்னாலஜி உள்ள ஆளாக இருந்தால் கூட ஒரு வில்லேஜோட லேண்ட் யூஸை கேட்கும் போது அந்த உள்ளூர் மக்கள் தான் அங்கே ஈரோவாக இருக்க முடியும் அப்போ அந்த ஒவ்வொரு சின்ன பசங்க முதல் கொண்டு தொழிலுக்கு போகிறவங்க மீன் பிடிக்கிறவங்க பெண்கள் கிட்ட எல்லாருக்குமே ஒப்பீனியன் கேட்டு அவங்களோட முழு பங்களிப்போட ஒரு வரைபடத்தை வந்து முதல் முதலாக So on further investigation, I realized that there was no enough documentation to prove that the land belongs or been utilized us for year long for livelihood of us as basic necessity cannot be documented or there is no enough documentation on that. So that's when a friend of mine, Siddharth Ande from Transport Chennai, Transparent Chennai, who knew geospatial technology came in touch with me. So we had a conversation and I asked him how to document it. That's when he said, GIS could be a solution for me to document this particular thing. So he also added that though I am well versed in technology and I can map something, but to know the clarity of the area of a land use, I have to converse with the local community and to understand along with what they want and what they have been doing in that area to map it with precision and delicacies and we as a community the women and everyone every youngster joined in hands and we made the first map from tamil nadu for this particular thing nammude traditional rights map la vandu podivu paniyaachi ana traditional rights ku vandu legal ah or angikaram iruka appdi solittu aayi panum bodu crs notification keela ccmb map postal management plan seiyanum அதில் தெளிவாக சொல்லியிருப்பாங்க ஃபிஷர்மேன் காமன் ப்ராப்பர்ட்டிஸ் ஃபிஷர்மேனோட இன்ஃப்ராஸ்ட்ரக்சர் சமூக கட்டமைப்புகள்லாம் காமிக்க சொல்லியிருப்பாங்க மீன் பிடிக்கிற இடங்களை தெளிவாக காமிக்க சொல்லியிருப்பாங்க சட்டப்படி இதை நம்ம முறையாக செஞ்சால் இதை வந்து நம்ம ஒரு சட்டப்படி இதை கோஷல் மனை கொண்டு வந்தாங்கன்னா நம்மளோட பாரம்பரிய உரிமைக்கு ஒரு லீகலாகவே ஒரு அங்கீகாரம் கிடைக்கும் So once the mapping was done we wanted some legal authorization to prove that the land area has to be associated with the fishermen and not to be class- classified as wasteland that's when through continuous detailings and information gathered we understood about crz notification the coastal zone management plan which talks about protecting the fishermen livelihood and their inclusion so with knowledge acquired we started mapping all the entities on and offshore assets ipo neenga paakara map vandu thiruvallur maavattathile lighthouse nadukku nu solittu land use map river use map kadal la enga enga ser irukku enna enna meen pidikranga enga enga meen pidikranga adoda vishayatha paakringa so these map represent the land use and the water use and also the offshore mapping which includes where whatever fishes are available along the coast idha local communities vandu oru theermanatha pass panni sattathile indha edathile idu solirukanga neenga padivu seiyunu solittu sambandhapatta department ku kadidha mulima letter anupranga map thoda vechi so the communities have marked all the areas they have been using the assets or the fishing areas they have been using and they have mapped it marked it and they have sent it as a proposal to the concerned government departments to take it as a charge and include it in the maps they have been making id 2018 la approve panna coastal zone management plan and the plan la vande idu and the makkal senja or varaipadatha paakringa and the data ottu mottama in the map la enna shape la irukko adhe shape la adha kondu vandirupanga 2013 la adha kondu varala veru or way point mandu kuduthittu koonu koonu potirupanga ana ipo approve panna map la மக்கள் செஞ்சு அமிச்ச வரைபடத்தை கொடுத்திருக்காங்களோ 
the 2018 revised map version which was not earlier included in the 2013 version so that இத வந்து ரொம்ப இதுவா சொல்ல முடியும் ஏனா எங்க அப்பா சொன்ன பொய் எனக்கு பொய்யா இருந்தது ஆனா நாளைக்கு ஏன் பைய வந்து சொல்லும்போது அது கண்டிப்பா ஒரு உண்மை இருக்கும் பாரம்பரிய உரிமைக்கு ஒரு சட்டரீதியான அங்கீகாரம் இருக்குன்ற ஒரு உண்மை வந்து கண்டிப்பா இருக்கும் so what my father told to me when i realized it was not truth that not be the same case for my son because he has documentations to prove that this is his land thank you so much எனக்கு இந்த வாய்ப்பை கொடுத்த ஜோ ஸ்மார்ட் இந்தியாவோட ஆர்கனைசேஷன் இருக்கு மனமார்ந்த நன்றி தெரிவிச்சுக்கிறேன்not only technologies but sectors over the last 3 days we have witnessed several important developments such as the launch of the geospatial strategy for new india report and the inauguration of the india observatory an open data platform that brings together more than 1600 data layers on social economic and ecological parameters at one place We're also proud to announce that this year we had over 2000 participants and 80 exhibitors. Our mission through this conference was to enable exchange of experiences, knowledge and solutions and promote networking to push geospatial technology adoption in key sectors. And this while developing innovative practices to ensure economic and environmental sustainability. We thank you for your enthusiasm and participation. which helped us achieve our mission. It's been an absolute pleasure to have witnessed your dynamic ideas and insightful presentations. I would now like to take this opportunity to thank our host partners, Government of Telangana and Survey of India, our gold sponsors, ESRI, Faro, Hexagon and Trimble, our silver sponsor, Here Technologies, our bronze sponsor, Oracle and LNT Next, our strategic government partners, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, NRSC Niti Aayog Namami Gange Airport Authority of India Forest Survey of India Department of Science and Technology our supporting organization knowledge partners and media partners i would also like to thank all my team members for helping bring this conference to fruition i read somewhere hellos are simple but goodbyes are complicated well that feels so true at this moment All three days of so much activity, intense thought sharing, energy and enthusiasm. It's now time to say goodbye until of course we meet again. See you at GeoSmart India 2020.